Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And right now, firefighters are investigating the cause of a northeast side fire that destroyed three mobile homes. Meanwhile, those families are now looking for places to stay. The 10th and final debate before Saturday's South Carolina primary and Super Tuesday. Who came out on top in the Democratic Party? I'm ABC's Serena Marshall with all of the sparring details coming up. And taking a look outside with uh, live cam. Mike standing by with a forecast. No wearing skirts and hats today. I can tell you that. You hear that, Mike? Okay, you've been <laughs> warned. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is February 26th, and it is turtleneck weather. It is cold out there, but it's the wind, man. It, made, it was scary yeah. driving in. I was like, ooh, ooh there's another one. Yeah, people this will be morning, drifting though. out of their lanes this morning. Yeah, uh, I, all, all night long. I mean, it was like, what is... I know, it was howling. The, yeah, that's the wind. Uh, at times, winds have been gusting close to 40 miles per hour. We don't have any wind advisories right now. The sustained winds are not high enough, but yeah, I mean, just literally, like you said, hang on to your hats and... Everything else, garbage cans are probably going to be down the street this morning. We uh, have a few clouds out there, but despite that, we're still continuing to drop down. About an hour or so ago, we were uh, right around the low 50s. We're down, down to 44 degrees, and I think we'll continue to drop down as some of this cooler air moves on in here. 39 to Lotus, 36 right now in Kerrville. Then you factor in the winds. Wind chill right now is 35 in town. 20s in portions of the hill country. Wind is out of the north primarily, about 15, 20 miles per hour, 25 over there in LaGrange. And then the gusts on top of that, 44 in Hondo, 35 at San Antonio, and a 26 mile per hour wind gust up in Kerrville. And there were some gusts uh, late last night in the area almost up to 50 miles per hour, about 47 um, and change as far as the wind gust. Now it's going to be windier this morning. It'll still be breezy this afternoon, not quite as windy. Mold is on the moderate side, low amounts of everything else as of right now. Temperatures will continue to drop down a couple of degrees, 40, but of course, We've got the wind, so it's going to feel much, much colder than that. And then it's not going to be a heat wave today. 54, that's about it with winds out of the north at 10 to uh, 20 miles per hour. So again, still a decent breeze, not as windy. Wind chills will do be down definitely in the 40s. Then the winds slacken off tonight, clear skies, dry air, and it's going to be really, really cold. We are looking at another freeze tomorrow morning. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Trujillo, I assume you would recommend both hands on the wheel. Mike, both hands. Oh, first of all, good morning to you and good morning everyone at home. But yes, you are correct. Both hands on the wheel. Put away those distractions throughout the morning commute. Now, right now out there on the roadway, so uh, here and there we have a little bit of construction and that's to be expected. But uh, I want to show you this trans guide camera right now. This is 35 at top line. Pay attention to the shake of that camera. Now, it's not a steady shake, which means those those that uh, wind comes in gusts. And when it does uh, hit you, uh, you will definitely feel it out there on the highway. So make sure you pay attention, put away those distractions. You're going to need 100% focus this morning out there on the roadways. As we look at some other areas, you can see that I-10 and Callahan eastbound and westbound lanes have more than enough room with no problems there. I-35 at Evans. Mark and Leslie. Thank you very much, Marcus. Well, new this morning, three mobile homes have been destroyed in a fire in northeast Bear County. Fire happened in the 6700 block of Walsham near Gibbs Sprawl Road on the northeast side. That's right. Sarah Coast is out there right now. She is talking to the battalion chief as we speak. She's gathering information. She'll bring us a live report as soon as she's available. Well, moving on to other headlines this morning. Now to the latest on the coronavirus. Continued to spread to countries worldwide. South Korea getting hit very hard. Now has more than 1,200 confirmed cases of the virus. And the first U.S. military soldier to test positive for the coronavirus is stationed in South Korea. Military officials say the 23-year-old soldier was in self-quarantine at home off base. He is stationed at Camp Carroll, and investigators are now trying to trace who he has come into contact with to determine if other people have been exposed. In your other national headlines, we begin with last night's Democratic debate. With only three days until the South Carolina primary, the candidates came out attacking Bernie Sanders on everything from gun control to the cost of his health plan. ABC Serena Marshall has highlights. Seven candidates, one stage, and a lot of crosstalk. Well, I respond, I respond to the question that Senator Sanders the word alienating. As each one made their final pitch for taking on President Trump in the fall by attacking their rivals. I don't care how much money Senate, uh, uh, Mayor Bloomberg has, the core of the, Repu of the Democratic Party will never trust him. I have been training for this job 
since I stepped on the pile that was still smoldering on 9-11. And all of the sideshows that the senator wants to bring up have nothing to do with that. Senator Bernie Sanders currently leading in the delegate count, taking the most heat throughout the night. If you think the last four years has been chaotic, divisive, toxic, exhausting. Imagine spending the better part of 2020 with Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump. I've been hearing my name mentioned a little bit tonight. <laughs> I will tell you, Pete, what the American people want and Joe what the American people want. They don't want candidates to be running to billionaires for huge amounts of funding. Right, Forced to explain his recent praise for Cuba's Fidel Castro, which brought some boos from the audience. What I said is what Barack Obama said in terms of Cuba, that Cuba made progress on education. Yes, I think, really? Former Vice President Joe Biden trying to recapture his momentum, coming out forceful and feisty. The people know me. And promising. I intend to win South Carolina. One team delighting in the chaos, the Trump campaign, calling the Democratic Party a hot mess. This was the last debate before Super Tuesday. That's when 30 percent of the delegates are awarded. In Washington, Serena Marshall, ABC News. U.S. Attorney General William Barr wants Congress to make sure parts of the nation's surveillance law do not expire. He met with GOP senators on Capitol Hill Tuesday and urged them to extend provisions of the Foreign Intelligence, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act that will no longer be valid after March 15. The FISA provisions expand the FBI's ability to wiretap certain targets and request key documents. Well, the mother of two children who disappeared in Idaho is expected to appear in a court in Hawaii today. The hearing will consider whether Lori Vallow's $5 million bail should be reduced. She's facing charges of desertion and non-support of children. Her attorneys say since those crimes come with a maximum fine of $500, her bail is too high. The whereabouts of her children are not known. We want to go back to our late breaking news here at home. New this morning, mobile homes destroyed in a fire in Northeast Bear County. Well, the fire happened in the 6700 block of Walsham, as we said, near Gibbs Sprawl, which is on the northeast side. Sarah Acosta is live on the scene of damage. Good morning and crews are still here just really love looking for those hot spots at this time in the semi mop up stage as you can see uh, there's crews inside this mobile home that is one of the destroyed mobile homes and they have a chainsaw right now um, cutting through the floor looking for those hot spots and you can just see how bad that damage is but I want to take you over here on this side this is where Bear County Fire believes the the fire started. This was an empty mobile home at the Jasper Mobile Home Park, and this is where they believe that fire started and spread because the winds were so bad. We just talked to the battalion chief from Bear County Fire Department. He told us the winds were horrendous. They actually had fire embers. He said blowing all the way to Walsham because to give you an idea of where we are, this mobile home, Jasper Mobile Home. Uh, park is maybe it's kind of set back into Walsham. If you take a, a, a small private road and it's set back and to have those embers blowing all the way to Walsham is maybe about 150, 200 yards away. So they were dealing with some really heavy winds this morning. Now, there was not anybody in the home where the fire started, but Fire did tell us that there were there were four people in this mobile home. Uh, they evacuated. Everyone got out safely, and no one was injured. Uh, they have two children in that house. They had two children in that house. They did say that a pet dog, a family dog, did pass away during this fire. The Red Cross is on scene helping the family of four that lived in this mobile home. Uh, fire crews telling us they're going to be out here at least for another hour as they continue to check for hot spots. Live from Northeast Bear County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. 439, 44 degrees. Disney's Bob Iger steps down as CEO, but he's taking on a new role with the company. What's the focus? We'll tell you coming up. City's West Side going to start noticing changes, all as a way to make housing more affordable. Those details are coming up next here on GMSA. And live cam giving us a look outside. I bet that camera's a shaking and a shaking. No, it's not. Hmm, must be pretty sturdy because it's windy.
Welcome back, everybody. Your time now is 442. Neighborhoods on the west side are getting a makeover. It's a way to make housing more affordable. The City Council has approved three developments as part of a 2017 Neighborhood Improvements Bond Program. Mixed income housing will be built over the next year out of a $20 million bond. The addition of new housing is not only for the benefit of residents, but also for small business owners. We've had many businesses on these corridors for more than for a hundred years. So we want to bring those small businesses back to life and we know that by bringing people here first, uh, it will help with that part of the development as well. This is the first million dollar bond related to housing for the city of San Antonio. Around 500 new affordable housing houses, I should say, is expected, are expected to be built. No place like home, right? Go Spurs go. The Silver and Black return to the AT&T Center tonight. They take on the Dallas Mavericks at 730. Hopefully they secure a win. There are only 26 games left in the regular season. This is going to go fast. Go Spurs go. 443, still 44 degrees. It can be a fun toy to play with, but it can turn life-threatening if swallowed. We'll tell you about the dangers of these small magnets coming up next. And a mother involved in the college admission scandal now sentenced to the harshest punishment to date. Next on GMSA, how much time she'll serve in prison in your GMA first look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the Hot Pocket heiress going to jail. Michelle Janiffs sentenced to five months behind bars for a role in the Varsity Blues college admissions scandal. The mother and philanthropist receiving one of the harshest sentences so far in the case after pleading guilty to paying bribes to get her two daughters admitted to elite universities. That she understands the harm that her choices caused. She understands the impact that those choices had on students who tried to apply. Janice admitted to paying Rick Singer, the mastermind behind the scheme, $100,000 to help doctor the ACT results for both her daughters and offering $200,000 to have one of them named a beach volleyball recruit at the University of Southern California. And Janice's defense has many parallels to that of actress Lori Loughlin. So what could this mean for Loughlin's legal strategy? It's coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. It is a danger we have reported on before, and now it's back. Those tiny but powerful magnets that are sold as desk toys, once again drawing curious children's attention. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has a parent alert. Tiny magnets, big danger to children. Seven years ago, little Braylon Jordan was just one of thousands of children rushed to ERs after swallowing tiny magnets like these. Therefore, so powerful, they perforated his intestine, most of which had to be surgically removed. These aren't just any magnets. Rare earth magnets can be 30 times stronger than ordinary refrigerator magnets. They're exceptionally strong for their size and can be difficult to separate. These really strong magnets, if they're swallowed can pinch together, breaking through the intestinal tract lining, causing serious trauma. The type of magnets that caused Braylon's injuries were banned in 2014, but two years later, federal judges rescinded the ban and the magnets started appearing on store shelves again. In 2016, when the ban was first lifted, the number of magnet ingestions called into poison control was 281, but they rose to an estimated 1,666 last year. Now that the ban has been lifted and these products are much more readily available. Parents, please be vigilant in protecting your kids from the dangers and hazards of these products. The Toy Association lobby points out these rare earth magnets are designed and sold as adult stress relievers or executive desk products and are not intended to be used as children's toys. But as all those calls to poison control show, children keep finding them and getting their hands on them. Safety advocates say if you have children in your home, don't have those magnets. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 449. Time to check the roadways. The wind could cause some prob problems out there today. That's right, Leslie. The wind could definitely be a factor in your morning commute. So just remember, once you head out, uh, put away those cell phones and those coffee cups. No distractions, both hands on the wheel. Now, currently no accidents, but as we take a look at different areas, 37, 35, the interchange here looks pretty good with no issues, but we do have some construction there at 37 and 910. So if you're westbound on 910, exiting for southbound 37, Exit ramp currently closed due to some construction. Now 35 at top one, we also have some flashing lights, but only one lane closed on that exit. So that's northbound 35, those folks exiting for uh, 1604 up there on the northeast side. You do still have one lane open, so no worries there. 1604 at Wiseman.
very quiet out there. Just one vehicle at this time. Very nicely lit up. So visibility is great out there. Roads are dry, but that wind will definitely get your attention more ways than one. It'll get your attention before you get in the vehicle, and it'll get your attention as you're driving on those overpasses on your morning commute. That almost looked like a shot from a zombie movie where there's nobody out there anymore. Ooh, yeah, that does remind me of a zombie movie. <laughs> Yeah, winds are howling this morning. Now, they are going to ease a little bit by this afternoon. That was, that was just me. Still, <laughs> oh, yeah, it did they're sound making, like they're making noise as well. Uh, sound effects, Marcus, cue right now. Good job, Marcus. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, enough with the sound effects. <laughs> Kill the Foley artist right now. Enough with that. So, okay, uh, beautiful, beautiful KSAC Connect picture. And we are going to have, we did yesterday, we're going to have beautiful sunrises, sunsets. Got a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning, though. And those aren't going to be sticking around all that long. Camera is shaking a little bit because, wow, we've got those strong winds. 36 right now in Kerrville. 34 lost maples. These are the actual air temperatures. Then you factor in, well, first of all, the humidity, which it was dry yesterday. And then we got sort of that reinforcing shot of drier air and this is really going to come into play. You can feel how dry it is on your skin, but that really dry air is going to come into play, especially tomorrow morning when we don't have the wind and we'll have the clear skies and that's going to uh, get us very, very cold tomorrow. So wind chill right now, 27 in Kerrville, 24 Lost Maples, 35 in town and 34 up the road in Balverde. Again, winds are about 20, 25 miles per hour. Sustained winds at 29 right now in Hondo. 44 mile per hour wind gusts, 26 Gonzalez, 35 mile per hour wind gusts out there at the airport. Some of the strongest wind we've seen around here in a long, long time. No wind advisories right now. The sustained winds aren't quite meeting the criteria, but it's just plain old breezy. So just watch it for debris in the roads as well. We've got some really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere right now, and all this dry air continues to get pumped on in here. Like I said, the wind is not going to be quite as breezy, still enough to notice it later on this afternoon. And then we get a kind of a extra push of this really, really dry air tomorrow morning. So like I said, that's setting us up for the cold morning tomorrow where we are going to be hitting freezing here in town and still going to be chilly on Friday morning. And then we're going to start to warm up as we go into the weekend. Mid 50s, that's it today. Down around freezing tomorrow morning, so definitely some 20s in the hill country. And then we should creep up close to 60 by tomorrow afternoon. And then we'll make it up into the mid 70s again. So we go from one extreme to the other, mid 70s by late in the weekend. 50 today at noon, plenty of sunshine. Wind out of the north, 15, 25 miles per hour. And then later on this afternoon, again, still a decent breeze, not as strong as this morning. Plenty of sunshine. Only 54, so it's going to be cold, even though we've got beautiful sunshine out there. Tomorrow morning, freezing here in town, so definitely a good hard freeze in portions of the hill country. We get up to 60 then, 65 on Friday. Great stretch of weather. <clears throat> Plenty of sunshine Saturday, up to 70. More clouds Sunday, a couple of showers Monday, Tuesday. Now the front's going to move through middle of next week. So hopefully tomorrow morning it won't be so windy. No, it will not. That's why temperatures are going to be getting down freezing. All right. Thank you. 453, 44 degrees. The Oprah Winfrey talk show is returning. Not to television, though. Details on the big plans Oprah has for her old show coming up next on GMSA. A big and sudden change at the top for Disney. Bob Iger, the chairman and CEO who brought Marvel, Pixar, Lucasfilm, and 20th Century Fox under the Disney umbrella, is stepping aside as Disney CEO, giving the day-to-day -day duties of running the company to Bob Chapek, who's been the head of Disney Parks since 2018. Chapek will report to Iger, who will focus on running the creative side of things as executive chairman until the end of his contract next year. Disney's the parent company of ABC News. Turns out there is something that can stop Tom Cruise from filming the coronavirus. Production on the upcoming seventh Mission Impossible movie was halted in Venice, where the film was supposed to shoot for three weeks. Italy has seen the largest outbreak of the deadly disease outside of Asia. Oprah opening the vault, turning all of her old Oprah Winfrey TV talk shows into podcasts. The audio versions of the shows will be available March 3rd. Show some love today for Michael Bolton. It's his birthday. The singer is 67, while another singer, Erica Badu, is 49. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Three till 43 degrees now. Actor Joaquin Phoenix is combining film and advocacy ahead on GMSA, the documentary he's making about life of animals on a farm. And is the battle between GIF and GIF finally over? Ahead on GMSA, what the peanut butter jar company is doing to settle it.
Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A couple of mobile homes destroyed by a fire that happened overnight. Sarah Costa live with details on exactly what happened. A heated debate in South Carolina last night. We have highlights of what happened and how the candidates approached Democratic frontrunner Bernie Sanders. And it feels more like South Dakota than South Texas out there this morning. The wind is whipping. It is cold. We'll check in with Mike. Good morning to you. We made it to midweek. It's Wednesday, February 26th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Yeah, it's cold outside and the wind makes it feel even colder. Wind chills are really significant this morning. Mike? Yeah, we've got some wind chills down in the 20s. We're going to show you that in a moment. Uh, you may have heard the winds overnight. I mean, at one point, even late last night uh, in uh, the area, we recorded winds about 47, almost 48 miles per hour. That was a wind gust. And we've had some pretty good gusts already this morning. It is now freezing in Rock Springs, 43 here in town and very, very dry air is in place. Look at that. That's a sustained wind out of the north and northwest at 20 miles miles per hour and that's about average as far as the uh, sustained wind. So temperatures again, low 40s and even some 30s. We are close to a normal low temperature right now, a little bit on the cool side because the normal low this time of year is actually uh, 47 degrees. So yeah, on the cool side and will continue to drop down. And then you've got the wind chill temperatures, which once again are in the 20s in the hill country, 34 in hello, same thing here in town and 35 is what it feels like up the road at Canyon Lake. Wind out of the north to northwest. 15, 20, 25 miles per hour and the gusts right now 35 at the airport, 38 in New Braunfels. Just last hour it was gusting to 44 miles per hour. The wind won't be as strong later on this afternoon, but still enough of a breeze out there and we've got a moderate amount of mold. Everything else is on the low side throughout the rest of today. Windy conditions still, like I said, not as windy, but chilly. Only mid 50s later on today. Beautiful sunshine though. Tomorrow morning it is going to be freezing here in town. So 20s in the hill country and then beautiful sunshine again, but still staying on the cool side and over the weekend we are going to have plenty of sunshine starting off increasing clouds, especially Sunday in temperatures. We go from freezing tomorrow up to mid 70s by Sunday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. And as we take a look at the roadways right now, no accidents. That's the great news. A little bit of construction here and there, but uh, nothing that should really delay you significantly. 6-0 Ford Wiseman. You can see traffic still moving along fairly well with no problems here. 35 37 here in the downtown vicinity, but those high winds will definitely get your attention. Some construction out there at 37 and I 10, but they're in the process of picking that up and opening it up for the morning commute. Remember both hands on the wheel, put away those distractions for your morning commute. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, strong gusts of winds. What Bear County Fire says made an early morning blaze at a mobile home park extraordinarily challenging. It's happening at Jasper Mobile Home Park, which was in the 6700 block of Walsham in northeast Bear County. Sarah Costa is live on the scene. So how many homes were destroyed? Good morning, Mark and Leslie. Two mobile homes destroyed in this fire early this morning. That fire starting here at this mobile home, which Bear County Fire Department told me was abandoned, then spreading to this one right next door where a family of four lived. But I want to show you the incredible video from earlier this morning. Bear County Fire Department says they got the call from the family living in one of the homes saying they heard popping outside their home and they got out of their house safely. When crews arrived, both mobile homes were on fire county county firefighter county firefighters say they believe the fire started in the abandoned home and because of the wind spreading to the family's home the fire now contained just in the mop-up stages checking for hot spots this was a two alarm fire with multiple entities responding including converse windcrest kirby the county and air force fire department Everyone from the fam everyone of that family of four living in this mobile home behind me was able to get out safely and no one was injured. The Red Cross was just here on scene helping out that family. They say a, f a family dog, however, passed away in this fire. Live from Northeast Bear County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. The accused drunk driver crashes broadside into another car, killing one man and seriously injuring four others. The crash occurred as she was driving on the sidewalk, just as the driver's trail of, on intoxication, trial rather, on intoxication manslaughter charges began. Things suddenly came to an abrupt halt. Paul Venom reports prosecutors tried to keep a defense expert witness from testifying. 
The driver of this white sedan, 22-year-old Mario Velasquez Palau, was killed and four passengers in his car were critically injured when this SUV crashed broadside into their car. 24-year-old Rosalinda Alali was driving that SUV and is on trial facing intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault charges. Dr. Eric Moody, an accident reconstruction expert, is among the witnesses that her lawyer plans to call. Some of the, the, the calculations that were done didn't appear to be consistent with the configuration of this crash as far as the alignment of the vehicles go. During this pre-trial hearing, prosecutors filed a motion seeking to have Moody barred from testifying, challenging some of his opinions. Others, however, tracked what prosecution experts are expected to say. I think the, the scene diagram is pretty self-explanatory. It looks like she's exiting the sidewalk, heading back toward her travel lane, as I recall. Olali had veered from the Loop 1604 access road and onto the sidewalk where she struck the car as it attempted to enter the access road. Moody said speed, too, may have been a factor. In my view as an accident reconstructionist, it's one of the factors in this reconstruction, her, her travel path prior to the collision itself. It's just one of the factors of many that I think the jury will have to take into consideration. Prosecutors dropped their motion and the process of selecting that jury began. First witness they'll hear from will take the stand this morning. That testimony from Dr. Moody should come in a day or two. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venom. The Democratic presidential candidates have unleashed a torrent of attacks on presidential frontrunner Bernie Sanders on the South Carolina debate stage last night, just four days before South Carolina's primary. Tuesday night's debate could have been their final primetime opportunity to change the direction of the 2020 nomination. Billionaire Mike Bloomberg took some shots too, and the moderates in the middle strained to be the one survivor who might stick through Sanders, or stick with Sanders rather, through the spring. The South Carolina primary is this upcoming Saturday. Two long-standing anti-abortion bills failed in the Senate yesterday. The bills have been, been introduced every year for the past few years. One bill is the Pain-Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, which would make it unlawful to perform an abortion if the fetus is 20 weeks or older. And the other bill is the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act, which requires doctors to provide medical assistance to babies who survive an abortion. Marathon personnel with the Los Angeles County Fire Department are working to contain a fire at an oil refinery in Carson, California. They're using fixed ground monitors as they work to depressurize the system. Now it's unclear if anyone has been injured. The Marathon refinery is the largest refinery on the West Coast. It processes heavy crude oil from California's San Joaquin Valley and Los Angeles Basin. 507, 43 degrees. A new full-size Amazon grocery store with no cashiers. It's coming up on GMSA. Colgate goes vegan, next on GMSA, new product that's totally vegan and also happens to be gluten-free. And live cam giving us a look outside. Boy, it is windy and cold this morning. Bundle up. You can see the camera shaking. Five Eleven in your morning consumer headlines. Colgate releasing a new line of organic, vegan, gluten-free products with no preservatives, artificial flavors, sweeteners, or colors. Colgate Palmolive announced its Colgate Zero line Monday. It includes toothpaste, including one specifically for children, as well as mouthwash and toothbrushes. This line may also help Colgate better compete with its largest competitor, Procter and Gamble, which makes Crest products. Well, there's a new cleaning product on the market that can kill surface bacteria for 24 hours, and you don't even have to wipe or scrub it. Procter & Gamble launched a line of surface antibacterial cleaning products that the company says provides protection against bacteria for 24 hours. Microband 24 comes in both sanitizing spray and uh, cleanser forms and as a bathroom cleaner as well. To use it, you just spray it and let it air dry. It's the first time a product like this is available to the general consumer. St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner, March 17th, and McDonald's is auctioning a product on eBay that will make your friends green with envy if you're the top bidder. Uh -huh. Yesterday, the fast food giant announced the 10-day eBay auction for a golden shamrock shake. It features an emerald and diamond-encrusted 18-karat gold cup. Bids start at a dollar, but McDonald's says the item's worth more like $90,000. Proceeds from the winning bid will go to Ronald McDonald House Charities. Cool. Ash Wednesday, 512, 43 degrees. A familiar face is coming back to the Billboard Music Awards for the third time. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you who. That, that's not a hint at all on the screen right now. Not even in the slightest. Jeff versus GIF. 
Next on GMSA, how Jif the peanut butter is settling the big debate. And trans guide, remember it's very windy, both hands on the wheels. You're going to notice it as soon as you walk outside. We'll get an update on your traffic coming up. I'm your 70 pound St. Bernard puppy. And my lack of impulse control is about to become your problem. Oh, no, come on, I saw you eating poop earlier. Hey! My focus is on the road, and that's saving me cash with DriveWise. Who's the dummy now? Forget Allstate. We're good drivers, save 40% for avoiding mayhem, like me. Sorry! He's a baby! I am totally blind, and Non24 can throw my days and nights out of sync, keeping me from the things I love to do. Talk to your doctor and call 844-214-2424. Skin Sin number 17. Too many after parties. New Neutrogena Bright Boost with Dullness Fighting Neoglucosamine. Boost cell turnover by 10 times for instantly brighter skin. Bright Boost, Neutrogena. Five fifteen. Amazon has opened a fully si a full size rather grocery store with no cashiers. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Mona Kosar Abdi have the details in your tech bites. In today's tech bites, Amazon has opened its first full size cashless grocery store. No lines, no cashiers. The shop and go store in Seattle is stocked with fresh foods and more. Shoppers swipe in with the Amazon Go app, take whatever they want, and walk right out. Your bill is automatically added to your virtual card. And you can apply now for a ride to the stars. Virgin Galactic is taking applications for spots on its Spaceship 2 space plane. The $250,000 seats on the initial flight are for astronauts, but applicants will have a chance to make a future trip. And Jif Peanut Butter joins the Jif versus GIF debate. Yeah, the company has teamed up with Giphy to create a special edition of Jif with GIF on the label to prove it should have a hard G. By the way, the creator says it's pronounced Jif. Got it. We think. Those are your tech bites. <laughs> GIF, GIF, mm. take the G, carry the I. And I had always, always, always heard the creator said it was GIF because no. it's graphic interface. No, he always said it was GIF. Really? Mm -hmm. See, I heard what you heard about the being graphic. No, yeah, that's, this, what, that's why people argued with him and said no. That makes... English language and just go with whatever we create. So I'm Officer Marcus Trujillo with a K. So let's take a look at the roadways. Right, the K is silent. No problems out there, uh, as you can see. Traffic traveling in all directions with no delays. And there's a I-10 at Frio with an X, and the X is silent. Uh, no problems on the eastbound or westbound lanes. Where's Sears's soapbox? We may need to break one out for Marcus too every once in a while, which is awesome. That's funny. Thank you, Mr. Trujillo. <laughs> but, but if it's a proper name, you can pronounce it almost any way you want to, though. But it's so. If it's somebody good, creates like something, whatever yeah, they you, call it is you, what it is. Can you call it whatever it's, it is mm -hmm. if you create it? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. You created it. It's yours. Name it. So crunchy or creamy? <laughs> Definitely creamy. Creamy. Peanut Neither. butter. They Neither. doesn't care. Yeah. I just, that's one thing I would miss anyway. if I was stuck on a deserted. You know, an island. Peanut butter? Oh, peanut butter. Wow. Well, hopefully you'll have the peanut farm on your... That and Whataburger. Anyway, I digress. Peanut butter on the Whataburger? No. Ew. With pickles. So, you know, we've had... Ew. A, I'm not pregnant. Jeez. <laughs> Are you sure? We've had a laundry list of allergens in the past uh, few days, week or so, and uh, yeah, this is the reason why. And like Yvonne says, hope the weather's nice because the tree thinks it's springtime. Everything is starting to uh, bloom around there, but... Everybody, vegetation, animals, people are going to get kind of rude awakening, not only when you walk outside this morning, but also tomorrow morning because we are in store for another freeze tomorrow. And the camera is definitely shaking out there. It is 43 at the airport. Normal low is 47 right now, 30s out in the uh, hill country. And we've got really, really dry. You can kind of feel how dry the air is, and it's going to get even drier. And this will really come into play then tonight when we have no wind to speak of because clear skies, dry air, light wind, all the perfect ingredients to get really cold. And that's why we are looking at freezing tomorrow. Now, as far as wind chills, we are down in the uh, 30s and 20s around all of the area. 32 is what it feels like at Randolph and 23 is the wind chill right now in Lost Maples. Wind is out of the north at 
uh, 15, 20, close to 25 miles per hour. And then we've got wind gusts to 38 in New Braunfels, 35 in San Antonio just within the past hour. It was gusting up to 44 and there were some gusts late last night pushing at 50 miles per hour. We don't have any advisories in effect. It's just plain old windy out there. As far as temperatures, it's not going to warm up all that much. We have some clouds right now. We'll make it up into the mid 50s later on today. And then tomorrow morning we drop down to freezing and then nice warm up. We almost double that getting up to upper 50s about 60 in the afternoon tomorrow. Nothing but sunshine really I mean, other than clouds this morning. Plenty of sunshine today tomorrow as well as on Friday. A couple of extra clouds on Saturday but still that great stretch of weather is going to continue and then Friday morning is going to be uh, pretty cold as well. So here's some of these low clouds that we have hanging in here right now. There's really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere and these are going to get pushed on out of here in the next uh, couple of hours. If you're doing any traveling by the way uh, check ahead got a big big hub up here in Detroit and they are getting socked as well as Chicago but uh, really getting hammered with a lot of snow so that could cause some potential delays today forecast today it is going to be windy all day long although not as windy later on this afternoon wind out of the uh, north about 15 25 miles per hour throughout the rest of the morning 50 at noon so it'll feel much cooler than that and 54 for a high temperature that's it about almost 15 degrees below normal and wind out of the uh, north at uh, roughly about 10 to 20 miles per hour. And then wind slacking off tonight, clear skies, dry air, 32 degrees, gonna be freezing. And that means mid and maybe some lower 20s in parts of the hill country tomorrow morning. We make it up to 60 in the afternoon. The uh, streak of sunshine continues all the way through basically Saturday. More clouds on Sunday, 75 degrees. Humidity definitely comes back in here. A couple of showers are possible on Monday as well as on Tuesday. Okay, weekend looks great again. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. 521, 43 degrees. The Billboard Music Awards have announced their host, Kelly Clarkson, is coming back for the third time. We have details on it coming up. A familiar face and voice is returning to Vegas. CNN's David Daniel has that and more entertainment news in your Hollywood Minute. I love talking and I genuinely like people. Kelly Clarkson is headed back to the Billboard Music Awards. The Grammy winning singer is set to host the BBMAs for the third straight year. The 2020 Billboard Music Awards take place April 29th in Las Vegas. Oscar winning actor and animal rights activist Joaquin Phoenix is combining film and advocacy. He's executive producing Gunda, a black and white documentary about a day in the life of animals on a farm. The film points out people share the planet with billions of animals and that all life has value. Gotta go fast. Nothing can stop box office champ Sonic the Hedgehog except closed movie theaters. Paramount has postponed the film's Chinese release since that country's 70,000 screens are still shuttered due to the coronavirus. By one estimate, all those closed theaters could wind up costing Hollywood studios more than a billion dollars in lost ticket sales. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, for the first time ever, a Broadway production will play at Madison Square Garden. Today, some 18,000 New York Public School students from all five boroughs will see a performance of To Kill a Mockingbird at the Madison Square Garden. Besides the timely message from Harper Lee's 1960 classic, the cast hopes um, an introduction serves as an introduction to live theater for students. 525, still 43 degrees. Do you give your child your cell phone to distract them? So you are able to get things done. It might be harmful. We'll tell you why coming up. Tired of not being able to get a good night's sleep on a flight? What a European airline is doing to change just that. And boy, I wonder what that's going to cost you coming up on GMSA. And if you would like to donate support to your political candidate by choice of choice by donating to their campaign, there's a scam you need to be aware of that's coming up. And here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, four, five, eight, Fireball nine, Daily four, zero, three, five, two, Fireball eight. And your cash five, one, two, eight, twelve, fifteen. That's your lottery numbers. Oh no, I thought we had another one. Mega Millions, two, nine, forty, three, forty, nine, sixty, three. Your Mega Ball was fifteen and a Mega Flyer of two.
Good morning. It is Ash Wednesday, February 26th. Thanks for being with us, everybody. It's potentially going to be kind of a messy commute because of that wind. It could be a very bad commute for some folks. So you really need to pay attention once you head out the doorway. Uh, before you make it to your vehicle, the wind will probably get your attention already <laughs> yeah. uh, due to the temperature. But once you're in your vehicle, especially on those overpasses, those big flower ramps, both hands on the wheel. Good advice. Even the most diligent of drivers today may find themselves drifting a bit. No coffee cups, no cell phones in the hands. Both hands. Yeah. Yes, sir. You may have heard the wind overnight. I don't mm -hmm. know. I did. I, I was did. rattling the screens yeah. on the windows. <laughs> it's like, what is that? Oh, that's the wind out there. And uh, we've had gusts late last night. There were gusts reported close to 50 miles per hour. Wow. Even about 44 in Hondo earlier this morning. Right uh, throughout the rest of the morning, temperatures will continue to drop down a couple of more degrees. We'll uh, bottom out here in town about 40. Close to freezing in the hill country, but then you got the wind chill to deal with. So mm -hmm. uh, most of the readings are down close to freezing right now and even in the uh, mid 20s. And then after school today, beautiful day, plenty of sunshine, only 54 degrees. It won't be as windy, but still breezy enough to where you're going to notice it. So then get ready because the really cold stuff moves on over here by tomorrow morning. We have got a uh, few clouds hanging around here right now. Most of those are going to be gone by well, probably just after sunrise and notice how the camera is definitely shaking a little bit. 36 Bernie, 36 also in Kerrville, 43 in New Braunfels and 42 at Randolph. And then again, these wind chills, most everybody's down close to freezing temperatures and then some is what it feels like with the wind out of the north at 22 miles per hour at Hondo 20 here in town. And then the wind gust to 38 still in New Braunfels, 35 here in town. We don't have any wind advisories in effect. But it's just plain old windy. It won't be quite as windy later on this afternoon, like I said, but you'll still notice it with those mid 50 temperatures. Molds on the moderate side, low amounts of everything else. Of course, the updated reading is going to be coming out in about, so oh, say, hour and a half, close to two hours. The weekend, once again, looks pretty nice. Will it be as cold? Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. No problems yet. Well, there may not be a wind advisory, but we're issuing a steering wheel advisory this morning. <laughs> Hold on to that steering wheel, folks. Uh, that will definitely get your attention uh, on your morning commute. Now, right now, as we take a look at the roadways, no accidents, but we do have a little bit of construction there, 35 at Topper Wine. You can still access 1604 from North Route 35, just one lane instead of two. And then I-10 at Proband, eastbound, westbound lanes, definitely picking up in uh, the volume. 281 at St. Mary's, no problems there. Mark and Leslie. Thanks, Marcus. New this morning, two mobile homes were destroyed in a fire, left one family without a place to go. It happened in the Jasper Mobile Home Park, which is in the 6700 block of Walsham on the northeast side. Firefighters say it was a two-alarm fire, and when they arrived, two mobile homes were engulfed in flames. Bear County firefighters believe it started in an abandoned home, and it spread next door. The family was able to make it out safely and is being helped by the American Red Cross. In your morning headlines, the coronavirus affecting the global economy's health. The disease is causing havoc on the stock market and headaches for companies, big and small. CNN's John Lawrence reports. The coronavirus might become an economic pandemic. This is going to clip something off first quarter GDP. How much? I don't know. On Tuesday, the Dow dropped nearly 900 points one day after it closed down more than a thousand. We've wiped out all of the gains that we've seen so far this year uh, in, this, in the market. Uh, we could see further declines, I don't know. You might see a reversal, right? The oil industry is also reeling from the coronavirus. OPEC is meeting next week. Right now, they're trying to see the barrel as half full. We are, have been through this cycle so many times. We are uh, adapting very well to manage whatever the situation called for. Something else the coronavirus is impacting? Coca-Cola. The soft drink giant says the artificial sweeteners it gets from China could be in short supply if the outbreak rages on. Mom and pop shops are also feeling the pinch, like Natalie M. Bridal Shop in Overland Park, Kansas. The majority of bridal gowns are made in China. Factory shutdowns and quarantines in the country are having a ripple effect for brides-to-be. In the past, we'd say, well, we'll go ahead and order it. They'll manufacture it. It'll be here in time. I can't do that today. I, today, I have to say, you know what, sweetheart? We've got to find you a different dress. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Now, investors have concerns about how the coronavirus is affecting global supply chains. China, the second largest economy in the world, could lose tens of billions of dollars this quarter. And travelers who want to cancel their trips to South Korea can do so without a penalty. A number of U.S. airlines are waiving cancellation 
and change fees. The Centers for Disease Control Prevention said people should not make uh, non-essential trips to South Korea due to coronavirus concerns. Travelers can check carrier websites for more information on how to cancel scheduled trips. U.S. airlines have already suspended flights to mainland China and Hong Kong because of the virus. Well, the Better Business Bureau is warning of a scam. It's targeting those who want to contribute to political campaigns. The BBB says that the scam works like this. You, you get a robocall, supposedly from a campaign, asking you for money. If you say yes, the call then transfers you to a person who takes your credit card information. That information can then be used to steal your ID. The BBB suggests screening your calls and staying away from unsolicited robocalls. Christians around the globe starting the Lent season with a visit to church today. Ash Wednesday kicks off Lent, which lasts 46 days leading up to Easter Sunday. Believers will mark the occasion with an ash cross on their forehead, which represents death and repentance. Many Christians and other faiths will then choose to fast or give up something they enjoy for the Lenten period. Easter Sunday is April 12th. It's been almost a month since our Spurs played at home, but they are finally back. The Silver and Black have returned home to the practice court and get ready for their final playoff push. There are 26 games left in the season. 15 of them are here at home. Team announced yesterday the Spurs will be without LaMarcus Aldridge due to soreness in his right shoulder. They are in 11th place in the Western Conference. Uh, three and a half games back from the eighth place Memphis Grizzlies. So it is game day. Silver and Black return to the AT&T Center tonight. They take on the Mavs, hopefully to secure a win. Game is set for 730. Go Spurs go. Marcus hurt his shoulder handling all those heavy trays and serving. Oh, at your dinner the, at the other night? Dinner the other night. I yeah. hope you tipped him well. 536, <laughs> 43 degrees. A reporter goes viral ahead on GMSA, the unique Facebook Live that has everyone on social media talking. Sometimes you give your kids your phone as a way to distract them uh, so you can get some things done. Well, next on GMSA, find out what that's actually maybe causing more harm than you could think. And live cam giving us a look outside. You like cold weather? You like the wind? You're going to love it when you go outside today. Welcome back. It is 539. Distracting your little ones with your phone may be an easy way to get some work done, but could those screens negatively impact your child? With more, here's ABC's Serena Marshall. Flipping on that cartoon or children's show might help keep your toddler's eyes entertained for hours. After all, the range of online videos is endless. Researchers at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health finding that three quarters of children are exposed to screens by 18 months of age, and one third even watch screens while eating. Researchers suggesting a hard time at work or too many chores at home may be to blame. Parents using screen time with their babies to help alleviate their own stress. When it comes to screen time, the World Health Organization recommends no exposure for children under the age of two. Neurodevelopmental risks are associated with early exposure to screen time. And so while parents may need to log in to work, they might want to find ways to log out their kids from their TV screens. With this Medical Minute, I'm Serena Marshall, ABC News. Ever have trouble sleeping on a flight? I can never sleep on flights. Well, one airliner in Europe may have a solution. Air New Zealand has availed the economy Skynest, six full-length sleeping pods. They hope will make long-haul flights more comfortable. Each pod will be about 6.5 feet long, 22 inches wide. They come with a pillow, sheet, blanket, earplugs, and privacy curtains. The airline reportedly exploring additional features such as reading lights and USB outlets. Well, it's got all that other stuff. It might as well have at least <laughs> some USB My outlets, right? goodness. Air New Zealand. Okay, yeah, they specialize in long haul. 541, 43 degrees. That is the bomb diggity. Yes, it is. <laughs> a Facebook Live to remember coming up on GMSA. Find out why a reporter in North Carolina has gone viral. We have got a couple little brothers here, and they are all puppy and all boy, and just rambunctious and sweet as can be. And you're going to meet these two coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Well, it is cute and adorable time, and Alexis is here from the San Antonio Humane Society, and these little boys, oh my gosh, they are cute as can be. Oh my gosh, yes, they are. This is right here, this is Cade with the awesome white markings on his face, and then this is 
Co Corey. <laughs> Corey. Sorry, I was going to say Cody. <laughs> and this is Corey. So I got confused because they actually are a litter of six that we have at the shelter right now. Wow. Um, and they are just the most adorable, most spunky little boys you will ever meet. And we're trying to figure out, you said they are <laughs> terrier and maybe a little bit of... Terrier uh, American pit bull mix. Yeah, and they've got some like <laughs> linebacker kind of legs on them. So they may not be the biggest, you know, what, 25, 30 pound dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a, just a guesstimate, but short hair, easy to take care of. And if you could take two of them, these guys could play together because <laughs> they've just been getting rambunctious and wrestling around here. Okay, <laughs> you wanna, do you want to go to Lexi? Here, wait, 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 wait. okay, you've got a both. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, yeah. They love being around each other, so that's <laughs> fine. Um, and that's great about um, okay, go to sleep. about Cade right here is that we actually have a two-year-old uh, at our shelter named Vince that has the same marking. So if you're not looking for a puppy per se, but someone that kind of looks just like Cade, um, then definitely come out and visit Vince because he is crate trained. He's really, you know, he's a big boy. That's um, the thing. The puppies always bring them all in, yes, but don't forget yes. about the older dogs, of too. Of course, of course. And don't forget that, you know, just around the corner is mm -hmm. Fiesta. Time's almost up. So we have El Rey Fido coming up. So um, if you want your pup to be Fiesta royalty, uh, then you need to go sign up to... Uh, Sign up for your, your pup to be El Rey Fido this year for 2020. You can do so by going to sahumane.org slash ERF. Um, post, a, post a photo of your pup, a short little bio, start fundraising for our shelter, and uh, yeah, hopefully they will be crowned royalty for 2020 El Rey Fido. And you could be one of the court jesters here. So anyway, if you'd like more information about these two little guys, all the other dogs and cats they have there at the San Antonio Humane Society or El Rey Fido, just head on over to 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. So cute. 546, have you ever dreamed about going to space? Maybe you want to send someone there? Well, now <laughs> is your chance. NASA is looking for a new crop of candidates for its training program. Roseanne Aragon with our sister station in Houston. KPRC has details. It's the apple of NASA's eye going to the moon and then Mars and beyond. NASA is recruiting what they're calling the Artemis generation of explorers. Today, trainers showed us what that preparation might look like and what they believe it will take to take humans further than they've ever gone before. We're going to the moon to stay by 2024. And this is how. NASA is preparing for its biggest endeavor. But here in Space City, NASA's big mission at the moment is recruiting the next generation of space explorers from all over the country to make the dream come true. Would you want to be an astronaut? Applications will be accepted starting March 2nd. We're looking for the folks who are have been passionate and dreamed of being an astronaut for their entire lives. With NASA's Johnson Space Center and facilities, human spaceflight is part of this city's DNA. At the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, the new generation of astronauts will train just just like this. But before the new recruits are hired, they must have a master's in a STEM field and pass NASA's long duration space flight physical. Copy one, copy two, let me check the back up. Learning to live amongst the stars in a weightless, tough environment and how to work as a team. Bottom line, it all comes back to safety. Taking the Artemis astronauts will be the Orion capsule. This crater is designed to go around the moon. Uh, it can't land on the moon itself. It's designed to carry four people launching atop what will be the most powerful rocket to the Gateway, an orbiting lunar outpost, the stop before heading to Mars. And astronauts would go through robotics training and simulations. Their hands are right here on the hand controllers. Contributing to this dream. I develop, design, test, install. Step by step. But NASA is looking for the dreamers who know the sky is not the limit. 23 years and I still love it. Of course, one step at a time, the next class of astronauts won't be announced until summer of 2021. That was Roseanne Ergon with our sister station, KPRC in Houston. Let's check on the roadway, see how your traffic's shaping up on this Wednesday morning. Well, still no accidents out there, so that's the great news. Bad news is that wind is uh, a potent a potentially attention getting out there, so make sure you have both hands on the steering wheel. Put away those cell phones and those coffee cups. As we take a look at various transguide cameras, I-10 and Callahan, eastbound and westbound lanes so far, no issues all the way through I-10 and Frio. And then taking a look at uh, one more. There we go, 604 Calera. No delays in anyone's travel times right now. Thank you, Marcus. Who's your friend? Mike, what are you this doing? Is, well, I was, so we could see Oriana a little bit better. Okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is our 9 o'clock producer, Oriana, Hello. and uh, we are pointing her out extra special today because you did something you did for the very first time yesterday, right? She's engaged to The Bachelor. Right. 
Maybe no. your husband's <laughs> not real happy about no, it either. Just so it's got just you know we're, we're having group therapy about love it. Trying. No, but a big yeah. big day for you yeah. personally yes. yesterday. Yes. We celebrated your citizenship yes. last year. Yes, in June. And today and she posted this great picture of her wrapped in an American flag, which we absolutely loved. Yes. And yesterday you I voted for the first time. How did that feel? Yeah, yeah how did feel. that feel? Honestly, it was really awesome. I, I was scared because there were so many candidates, so many races. So I was like, you know, I did my research. I figured out who I was going to vote for and everything. Right. And then I was like, what if I forget all their names when I'm there voting, you know, because right. there's so many of them. But it was easy, honestly. I, I, I think it was an easy process. I went in. There wasn't a lot of traffic. So. For people who don't know you, what's your background? Um, I was born in Venezuela. I moved here when I was 14 years old with my parents. And then took us it, about nine years, and we became citizens. This all past of you, year. yes, all of us. Yeah. Oh wow! It's just Me such a wonderful parents. thing. Yeah. Well, and it's such an honor to be able to vote and to live yes. in this country. Correct? Yes. You're an example to all of our viewers. Don't waste it. Don't Go waste out it. and yes. vote. We're going to chat more with Oriana coming up today on GMSA at nine. So many Tune people in. take it for granted, but. You, you know what the privilege is like. Yeah, I, what the I right do, is like. and I love it. Yeah. I'm very grateful for it. So. Yay! Oh, that's awesome. well, we love you. We'll see you again on the yep. 9 a.m. show. Okay? Thank you for doing what we should all be doing. Yep. All right, when you head outside this morning, it is windy and it is pretty darn cold out there, but it's going to get a lot colder. We have got kind of a shake to the camera as of right now. 36 in Comfort, 34 in Kerrville. So obviously close to freezing in some of the outlying areas. Actually, the wind is keeping us from getting as cold as what we could get because it keeps the atmosphere stirred up instead of allowing the, the heaviest, coolest air to settle down here to the surface. That'll definitely be the situation tomorrow, though. But then no matter how you slice it, you get uh, some cold <laughs> temperatures as far as wind chills are concerned. Bone dry air out there right now, and that's really going to come into play. I keep saying by tomorrow morning because uh, clear skies, dry air, light wind. That's the perfect ingredients for really cold temperatures. Wind chill readings right now, though, 34 in town, 27 over toward Bernie and 23 in Lost Maples. And we've got these winds out of the north at about 15, 20, 25 miles per hour. We're still seeing wind gusts at 38 in New Braunfels, 35 in San Antonio. It will still be breezy this afternoon. It's not going to be as windy, though, this afternoon. Still enough to make you uh, kind of stand up and notice. Temperatures, we are going to make it up into the mid-50s later on today. And then cool off fairly quickly tonight. And those winds are going to be settling down. And temperatures will drop off pretty quickly. And then we're looking at a freeze here tomorrow morning. And some 20s in portions of the hill country. And then we make it up to right around 60 by the afternoon tomorrow. So that will kind of start the warming process. We do have a few clouds still left over here, but as you can see, those are going to continue to move out. So maybe one or two of them uh, this morning and then plenty of sunshine throughout the afternoon. Keep pointing out kind of the uh, the heart of all this is this big storm system, and that is dumping just a ton of snow around Chicago, Detroit. Point that out because if you are doing any traveling, uh, may cause some delays up there because of those big hubs in Chicago as well as in Detroit. Now, as far as our forecast today, picture perfect. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful weather. We've got some bone dry air not only here at the surface, but also upstairs. So we'll have lots of blue skies out there. It's still going to be windy by noon, 50 degrees and lots of sunshine out there. And then later on today, only 54. And with the wind, even though it's going to settle down a little bit, it'll feel colder than that. Then it really gets cold overnight tonight. Again, temperatures are going to be dropping off really quickly once that sun starts thinking about going down. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to be right down around freezing and then getting up to 60 degrees. It'll still be cold on Friday morning in the uh, mid 30s. We'll start to warm up by the weekend. 75 Sunday, more clouds and maybe a couple of showers Monday and Tuesday. Not great rain chances, though. Michael, thank you. You're very welcome. Right now, 553, 43 degrees. You might have seen it on social media, a reporter going viral after doing a Facebook Live. So why? Find out next on I'm, GMSA. I'm, I'm curious. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, a ruckus Democratic debate. Frontrunner Bernie Sanders feeling the heat, facing a barrage of attacks. Our political team is breaking it down with just three days to the next votes. You'll see it right here on GMA. You might have seen this viral video going around social media. A North Carolina reporter gave online viewers a hilarious weather report last week. Let's take a look. Justin Hinton with WLOS was on Facebook Live. Madison County is part of his station's weather coverage. He says he accidentally activated a filter generator. Zany filters started popping up while he did his entire report. Hinton says he's just happy he was able to give other people a laugh and a smile.
Well, he just went through about every filter there was on there. That is funny, and he's trying to be so serious, too. Well, 557, happy, healthy relationships with same gender peers could impact you, you middle school students, your middle school students' love life years down the road. In the next hour, GMSA will look at how best friends could impact romantic relationships. Trans guide right now, 281 at Hildebrand. Traffic is looking fantastic, but we'll see if there are any major accidents popping up in the next three minutes or so. As we go to break, let's review all your lottery numbers. And here they are. Pick three, four, five, eight, Fireball nine. Your daily four number, 0352 Fireball eight. Cash five, one, two, eight, 12, and 15. And don't forget, we have Mega Millions, 29, 43, 49, 63. The Mega Ball of 15, the Mega Plier was two. Good luck. Two mobile homes destroyed early this morning in a fire in Northeast Bear County. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. What fire crews say made this fire so challenging? The 10th and final debate before Saturday's South Carolina primary and Super Tuesday. Who came out on top in the Democratic Party? I'm ABC's Serena Marshall with all of the sparring details coming up. And have you seen this jarring video yet? It's from Cibolo. Officials now working to make sure proper signs are posted near a railroad crossing after a train crashed right into an 18-wheeler. And taking a look outside with live cam, very cold start to your day, everybody, and very strong winds. Mike is standing by with your forecast. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. Hope you slept well or had a good overnight shift. It is Ash Wednesday, February 26th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. You might have been awakened by the strong winds. They were howling overnight. It's rattling the shutters. If anybody has shutters around here anymore, <laughs> Mike Oster Hage. Yes, indeed. I actually saw a couple of, uh, you know, small branches down in the road, too. Mm -hmm. So trash cans are probably going to be, you know, I was going to say, you'd secure your trash cans. Uh, yes, indeed. Hang on to your hat and an extra spray of final net, Mark, because um, it's going to <laughs> <laughs> because it's Why windy me? this morning and uh, find and somebody with the more way more hair than me okay anyway uh 41 right now here in town we've continued to drop down in the past couple of hours as the cold air gets pushed on in here despite the fact we have these winds because usually that doesn't keep us from getting as cold as what we could we've got uh, close to freezing readings out there in parts of the hill country then you factor in the wind and wind chill right now feels like 31 in town. Same thing, Randolph freezing is the wind chill in Balverde and then 20s out toward the uh, hill country. And the wind right now is out of the north, 24 miles per hour. These are sustained winds, 21 Hondo, 22 in New Braunfels, and then the gusts on top of that, 37 here in town. Uh, late last night, there were some wind gusts pushing at 50 miles per hour. And even this morning, the wind was gusting close to about 45 there in Hondo. Windier this morning, and then the winds are going to be not as strong, but still a decent breeze throughout the rest of the afternoon. Molds on the moderate side, ash, elm, and juniper are all on the low side. So temperatures will uh, pretty much about bottom out about 40 here in town. Of course, that doesn't take into account the wind, so it feels much colder than that. Stays windy through the first part of the day, and we'll make it right up to about 50 at noon, and the wind will begin to ease a little bit, but again, still enough of a breeze to make that 54 degrees. That's it for a high temperature today. Feel much cooler than that, despite the fact we're going to have some beautiful sunshine and then the winds ease off tonight. Temperatures will drop very quickly and it's going to be cold. As a matter of fact, we're looking at a freeze here in town by tomorrow morning. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's officer Marcus Trujillo and Yet despite the wind, I mean, we haven't had a lot of problems from that, which could be a big deal with big trucks, right? Especially uh, with all those elevated flyover ramps that we have, 604 uh, I-10, 604 21, 410 21, 410 I-10. Those could be problems today with these high winds. Remember, both hands on the wheel, put away those distractions this morning. And as we take a look outside through TransGuide currently, no delays on the highways anywhere. In 35 at Evans, you can see north and southbound lanes are starting to pick up in volume. So don't wait too long before you head out the door this morning. Mark. Thank you very much, Marcus. Two mobile homes destroyed after an early morning. Two alarm fire out in northeast Bear County. Bear County Fire Department says strong wind gusts made that fight extremely challenging. Sarah Costa live at the Jasper Mobile Home Park near Walsham and Gibbs Sprawl Road with the latest. Sarah. 
Good morning, and those fire crews have cleared the scene after they contained the fire about an hour and a half after they got the call around two o'clock this morning. Fire crews believe that fire starting in an abandoned mobile home and then spreading to the home next door. But check out the video from earlier this morning where you can really see those flames and how the wind made fighting this fire difficult. At one point, the fire embers were blowing out about 300 to 400 feet. That's what the Bear County Battalion chief told us this morning. Bear County Fire Department says they got the call from the family living in one of the homes saying they heard popping outside their home and they got out of their house safely. When crews arrived, both mobile homes were on fire. County firefighters say they believe the fire started in the abandoned home because of the wind spread to the family's home. This was a two alarm fire with multiple entities responding, including Converse, Windcrest, the county and Air Force Fire Department. Everyone from that family of four that included two children are out safe without injuries. The Red Cross was here helping them. The family, the battalion chief did tell us a family dog, however, did die in that fire. As for what caused that fire, that is not known at this time. Now, the battalion chief did tell us that in that abandoned home, squatters are known to frequent it. The Bear County Fire Marshal office was out here investigating. They did say when they arrived, no one was in that abandoned home. Live from the northeast side of, of Bear County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you. The Civil Police Department, TxDOT, and Union Pacific are working to make sure proper signs are on the roads near railroad crossings. It comes after a train crashed into an 18-wheeler. This happened yesterday morning. Take a look at your screen. Watch this video. The driver recorded it while waiting before, a, here it comes, while waiting before a railroad crossing at FM 78 and Country Lane in Cibolo. You can see the 18-wheeler on the tracks before the train hits it. Luckily, nobody was hurt in the crash. The driver jumped out just in time. Officials are urging truck drivers to be aware of their route and use caution when crossing over railroad tracks. To see this video again, you can watch it on KSAT.com. Just search train crash. Apparently, the wheels were, um, the track was too high, and so it got stuck when it went over it. And it was an Amtrak train that went by and hit that, that big rig. He's lucky. The driver's really lucky. 606, an accused drunk driver crashes broadside into another car, killing one man and seriously injuring four other people. That crash occurred as she was driving on the sidewalk. Just as the driver's trial on intoxication manslaughter charges began, things suddenly came to an abrupt halt. All Venom reports prosecutors try to keep a defense expert witness from testifying. The driver of this white sedan, 22-year-old Mario Velasquez Palau, was killed and four passengers in his car were critically injured when this SUV crashed broadside into their car. 24-year-old Rosalinda Alali was driving that SUV and is on trial facing intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault charges. Dr. Eric Moody, an accident reconstruction expert, is among the witnesses that her lawyer plans to call. Some of the, the, the calculations that were done didn't appear to be consistent with the, the configuration of this crash as far as the alignment of the vehicles go. During this pre-trial hearing, prosecutors filed a motion seeking to have Moody barred from testifying, challenging some of his opinions. Others, however, tracked what prosecution experts are expected to say. I think the, the scene diagram is pretty self-explanatory. It looks like she's exiting the sidewalk, heading back toward her travel lane, as I recall. Olali had veered from the Loop 1604 access road and onto the sidewalk where she struck the car as it attempted to enter the access road. Moody said speed, too, may have been a factor. In my view, as an accident reconstructionist, it's one of the factors in this reconstruction, her, her travel path prior to the collision itself. It's just one of the factors of many that I think the jury will have to take into consideration. Prosecutors dropped their motion and the process of selecting that jury began. First witness they'll hear from will take the stand this morning. That testimony from Dr. Moody should come in a day or two. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venom. San Antonio police are asking for your help to find two men who robbed a 7-Eleven. They say these two men walked into the store in the 5700 block of Babcock back on February 20th. The cashier told police it looked like one of the men had a concealed weapon. And they demanded money from the register. They drove off in a black sedan afterward. If you recognize them, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. 
A Comal ISC bus driver on administrative leave over allegations she assigned seats to students based on the race. Parents and their children say students of color were placed at the front of the bus while white students were placed at the back Monday and Tuesday. District says the driver told them students were separated because of behavioral issues. However, some parents told us they feel the assigned seats were based on race. We expect the highest level of professionalism from all of our employees and we do not tolerate any type of discriminatory behavior. We're in a day of age where you don't think that you would have to deal with this type of racism because that's what it is. And still today, here we are in 2020 going through the same thing that was going on in 1952. Well, ISD students have given statements for their ongoing investigation. To learn more about the story, head over to KSAT.com. The Centers for Disease, excuse me, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are warning Americans that more cases of the coronavirus could spread throughout the United States. It comes as more cases continue to be confirmed around the world and here at home. There are 57 total cases in the U.S. and a U.S. soldier contracted the virus in South Korea. Fears continue to rise in Iran with a total of 19 deaths and 139 cases in that country. Meanwhile, Japan is saying that it will move forward as planned for the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. Some of the International Olympic Committee members are concerned that the games could be postponed or even canceled, but others say there are no plans to do so. We will have more on the impact of the coronavirus this morning in our next half hour. In a combative night in South Carolina, Democratic presidential hopefuls fought to get their voices heard on stage. Senator Bernie Sanders was the main target as the other candidates challenged his stances on gun control and the cost of his health plan. That's right. ABC's Serena Marshall has a look at some of the top moments from the South Carolina debate. Seven candidates, one stage, and a lot of crosstalk. Can well, I respond, I respond to the question that Senator Sanders the word right? alienating. As each one made their final pitch for taking on President Trump in the fall by attacking their rivals. I don't care how much money Senate, uh, uh, Mayor Bloomberg has. The core of the, Repo of the Democratic Party will never trust him. I have been training for this job since I stepped on the pile that was still smoldering on 9-11. And all of the sideshows that the senator wants to bring up have nothing to do with that. Senator Bernie Sanders currently leading in the delegate count, taking the most heat throughout the night. If you think the last four years has been chaotic, divisive, toxic, exhausting, imagine spending the better part of 2020 with Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump. I'm hearing my name mentioned a little bit tonight. <laughs> I will tell you, Pete, what the American people want and Joe what the American people want. They don't want candidates to be running to billionaires for huge amounts of funding. Right, Forced to explain his recent praise for Cuba's Fidel Castro, which brought some boos from the audience. What I said is what Barack Obama said in terms of Cuba, that Cuba made progress on education. Yes, I think. Really? Former Vice President Joe Biden trying to recapture his momentum, coming out forceful and feisty. The people know me. And promising. I intend to win South Carolina. One team delighting in the chaos, the Trump campaign, calling the Democratic Party a hot mess. This was the last debate before Super Tuesday. That's when 30 percent of the delegates are awarded. In Washington, Serena Marshall, ABC News. 6, 12, 41 degrees. Although the presidential debates continue, another debate really has some people stirred up. So, see, well, you're going to know what food brand is giving their thoughts on the GIF versus GIF argument. Selena, never far from the hearts and minds of San Antonians and South Texans, today marks the anniversary of one of her most famous concerts. More about that evening coming up after the break. And live cam giving us a look outside for a couple of beautiful days, although it's going to be pretty cold, especially in the mornings. Mike's going to have an update coming up. Trending right now on KSAT.com, today is Ash Wednesday, marking the official start of Lent, and that means San Antonians will hit up their favorite seafood places and today and for Meatless Fridays. Right now on KSAT.com, you can see what local places around the Alamo City are offering deals or just serving something a little different. Speaking of fish, Fish City Grill is opening a second location here in the Alamo City. The company announced the new store will open at 1604 and Cool Labra. The restaurant bills itself as a, quote, neighborhood seafood joint. 
specializes in seafood dishes made from scratch, along with a selection of wine, beer, and craft cocktails. And 25 years ago today, Selena gave one of her most memorable performances of her career. The Queen of Tejano put on a record-breaking show at the Houston Rodeo in front of 61,000 fans. It was also one of her last performances. To see a clip of the concert and to see our trending stories, just go to KSAT.com. And see what's trending on the roads. Marcus? Well, we do have an accident not on the highways and uh, really up on the northeast side. Warsbach Parkway will be fine eastbound and westbound. However, Nacogdoches is just south of Warsbach Parkway. A uh, moment for a little while is going to be shut down right there at Hill Point. We have a major accident currently in the clearance stages. It's a motor vehicle pedestrian action, but on the highways themselves, no problems at this point. Now, 35 at Evans, as you can see, north and southbound lanes running uh, about as that's about average as far as your uh, volume of traffic north and southbound lanes are I-35 at Evans and so far no delays on the highways and anyone's travel times. Thank you Marcus. So fish is the dish of choice now that Lent has begun. You're saying Luby's was on SA Live yesterday with a seafood pot pie? They, had, they pie? were showing some of their, their special fish dishes. Ooh, so, oh, yeah, that sounds pretty seafood, tasty. Seafood pot pie. I had a lobster pot pie one time really? at a fancy restaurant in Las Vegas. Why does your face look well contorted? Like because it was cut? it was so rich. It was I had a hard time. I think it I finished maybe huh? a third of it. Very probably the most expensive pot pie I will ever <laughs> ever. <laughs> and buy. you didn't even love it. It was again Just way too, too rich. rich. Yeah. Can you have food that's too rich though? Yes. Well, sometimes anyway. Um, <laughs> well, you need something nice and warm. You know, fuel in the furnace this morning. And I love that picture. How beautiful is that cardinal? A male northern cardinal perched on the critter cam. It's a great shot. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Olson. You always take some great shots of all the, uh, the birds out there. We've got a few high clouds still hanging around this morning, but they've started to break up just a little bit. Some mid uh, and higher clouds out there. 41 degrees here in town, 39 in Valverde. Normal low temperature for San Antonio is 47. So obviously we are definitely uh, cooler than that. And it is freezing right now in Lost Maples. Then you factor in the wind and wind chill temperatures. Everybody's down. It, it basically feels like freezing out there and then some with wind chills down in the 20s in parts of the hill country. And it has been just blustery overnight. You probably heard the wind overnight. It was at times gusting. There were some reports uh, close about uh, anywhere from 45 to 40 to almost 50 miles per hour. And then earlier this morning, we clocked a, a 44 mile per hour wind gust in Hondo. These are the sustained winds about 15, 20, 25 miles per hour. And then it's still gusting to 37 here in town, 36 in New Braunfels, 28 mile per hour wind gusts in Hondo. It will be windier this morning than later on this afternoon, but still enough of a breeze out there combined with the fact that we're only going to make it up to about the mid 50s later on today. Then the wind's going to settle down once the sun goes down. Temperatures will cool off very, very quickly overnight and looking at freezing temperatures tomorrow morning here in town. We're going to have the clear skies, really, really dry air out there as well. So we're looking at some 20s in parts of the hill country and then we'll make it up to right around 60 or so in the afternoon tomorrow. And it's still going to be cold by Friday morning, about 40, maybe some upper 30s around here. And then we'll continue the, kind of the warming trend going into the weekend. Now, as far as clouds, yeah, still a few of those kind of mid-level clouds hanging around here, but then we'll continue to uh, clear on out and there's some really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. So we're going to have some gorgeous blue skies. So here's the latest front that moved on through this big flow coming in here uh, straight from Canada and we'll still maintain kind of a northwesterly flow, which means we're going to have some beautiful weather, not only today, tomorrow, Friday, most of the day on Saturday. Things will start to kind of modify a little bit going in toward the weekend. That's going to help to warm us up to right around 70 on Saturday and getting up into the mid 70s going into Sunday. But we get more of this southwesterly flow aloft, and so that's going to pull in some more moisture aloft, get some more clouds in here, especially Sunday, Monday. And that next uh, wave moves on through, and that's going to give us maybe a couple of showers around here Monday and Tuesday, but then also pull another front in here. So we'll go from 70s and then cool back down. I don't think it's going to be as strong as this latest front, but uh, it'll cool us back down for the middle part of next week. 50 today at noon, lots of sunshine, still going to be breezy throughout the morning, and then the wind won't be as strong 
Still uh, enough of a breeze to notice it. 54 for a high temperature today. That's it. About 15 below normal. Freezing tomorrow morning. We make it up to 60. And then we go into Friday. Another good looking day. Another chilly start Friday morning. 70s by the weekend with increasing clouds. 621, 41 degrees. A, a prominent defendant in the college admission scandal just received the harshest sentence to date. Find out just how long Michelle Janabs will spend in jail in your GMA first look. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. Attention. If you were born before 1958, listen closely. Industrial and trade workers were exposed to deadly levels of asbestos decades ago. This means people who started working in these jobs in the 1970s or before are being diagnosed today with mesothelioma and other asbestos-related diseases. If you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma, find out today if you're eligible for compensation. Call Sokolov Law now at 1-800-906-7200. 1-800-906-7200. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. Here's a razor that works differently. The Gillette Skin Guard. It has a guard between the blades that helps protect skin. The Gillette Skin Guard. Hey, fellas. We've got to talk. Mm -hmm. It's about your food. It has spray-on flavor and powdered meat. It's time for fresh food that belongs in the fridge next to our food. Now, who's hungry? Fresh Pet. In this morning's GMA First Look, the Hot Pocket heiress going to jail. Michelle Janis sentenced to five months behind bars for a role in the Varsity Blues college admission scandal. The mother and philanthropist receiving one of the harshest sentences so far in the case after pleading guilty to paying bribes to get her two daughters admitted to elite universities. That she understands the harm that her choices caused. She understands the impact that those choices had on students who tried to apply. Janice admitted to paying Rick Singer, the mastermind behind the scheme, $100,000 to help doctor the ACT results for both her daughters and offering $200,000 to have one of them named a beach volleyball recruit at the University of Southern California. And Janice's defense has many parallels to that of actress Lori Loughlin. So what could this mean for Loughlin's legal strategy? It's coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Amazon has opened its first full-size cashless grocery store, complete with no lines and no cashiers. The Shop and Go store in Seattle stocked with fresh food and more. Shoppers swipe with the Amazon Go app, take whatever they want, and walk right out. The bill is automatically added to your virtual card. Cool. You can now apply for a ride to the stars. Virgin Galactic is taking applications for spots on its spaceship to space plane. The $250,000 seats on the initial flight are for astronauts, but applicants will have a chance to make a future trip. Okay, here we go. Jif Peanut Butter joining the Jif versus GIF debate. The company's teamed up with Giphy, the meme app, to create a special edition of Jif Peanut Butter with the G-I-F on the label, GIF, to prove it, prove it should be with a hard G. By the way, the creator of the image format says it is pronounced Jif. You heard that right. Jif pronounces it GIF. Are you confused? Jif pronounces his GIF, but the, found, the person who created the whole thing says it's Jif, not GIF. Which flies in the face of logic that the person who created it would say it's not... GIF. Yeah. Because it's graphic, blah, 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 blah. Exactly. But it's I think exactly he said he right. named it after the peanut butter. That's why he calls it Jif. You're not helping! <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that's what he said. <laughs> that's funny. I'm so confused. It is just about 28 minutes after 6, and it's 41 degrees. Been about a month, but the Spurs will be back at the AT&T Center tonight. We have a preview of tonight's matchup against the Dallas Mavericks. Strong gusts of winds making a fire in a mobile home park in Northeast Bear County early this morning. Extremely challenging for fire crews. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. In just a bit, we'll show you the damage of two homes destroyed. Outside Whoa. with live cam, the sun is coming up. It's a few broken clouds out there, but the key thing is it's windy and it is cold. People be advised. It is Wednesday. It is February 26th. How are the roadways shaping up on this windy Wednesday? 
Well, the highways look great. Now, we do have a major accident on Nacogdoches. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but the highways, all clear right now. No changes in anyone's travel times. Thank you, Marcus. How long are these winds going to stick around? Uh, throughout most of the day, it's going to be windier this morning, and then they'll ease up a little bit. But you'll still kind of notice the wind later on, especially given the fact that it's not going to be any heat wave later on this afternoon. Temperatures are in the 30s and low 40s right now, and... Wind chills put it down in low 30s and even 20s, and then 54 for a high temperature. So we're going to be about 15 degrees below normal. Wind is still going to be about uh, 10, 15 miles per hour, maybe a little bit uh, on the breezier side at times. And then get ready because it's going to be even colder tomorrow. Okay. We'll need your heavy coat tomorrow. We have a few leftover clouds out there right now, but obviously the uh, clouds are breaking up quite nicely in. Notice that little quiver to the camera. Live cam over there by the airport. 41 all around the metropolitan area. 31. It is freezing in Lost Maples. 33 in Kerrville. So in outlying areas there may be actually at freezing. This is the thermometer reading. Then you factor in the wind. And it feels like 32 in Helotus, Port S.A. 28 is the wind chill in Tarpley. And 21 is the wind chill right now out there in Lost Maples. 23 in Kerrville. Wind, it has been, actually it was stronger in the overnight hours, uh, late last night, there were some recordings of about 47, 48 mile per hour wind gusts, and we had a 44 mile per hour wind gust earlier this morning in Hondo. These are the sustained winds about 15, 20, close to 25 miles per hour, and we still got 37 mile per hour wind gusts out there at the airport. As far as the allergens, molds on the moderate side, light amounts of everything else. Yeah, get ready for a very cold morning. Next couple of mornings are going to be pretty cold, but we're looking at a freeze by tomorrow morning. Weekend forecast, that's coming up. Time saver traffic. Traffic right now. So you said the only big accident is that one on Nacogdoches? On Nacogdoches, but the highways, as you see, no issues. So no delays in anyone's travel times on any of the highways. Now let's get back to that major accident. We're going to go up to the northeast side. We're south of Wurzbach Parkway, and it's going to be Nacogdoches at Hill Point. And uh, reports are that we have Nacogdoches closed in both directions. But for the latest on this accident, this major accident, let's go live to Katrina Weber out at the scene. Katrina? Well, good morning, Marcus. Yes, just as you said, this road is shut down for what police here confirm is a fatal accident. A woman who was crossing the street and hit by a car. Uh, they still have the scene just here. It's just south of Wurzbach Parkway. You can see the parkway in the distance. Uh, she is still on the ground, so we're going to be careful about what we can show. But uh, police tell us that she did leave uh, a restaurant in this area. She crossed over and uh, was, looks like she was almost onto the sidewalk when she was hit by a car. Uh, police are talking to, we believe, a driver, at least one driver who was involved, as well as some witnesses. So it appears that uh, the person who hit her uh, may have stopped. So uh, police are trying to sort all of the details out yet, and then they will be briefing us. Uh, but again, they do say it is a fatal accident. A woman who was hit by a car as she crossed the street here at Nacogdoches, just south of Wurzbach Parkway. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A strong gust of wind made it very challenging for fire crews to put out the flames at two mobile homes early this morning. This blaze happened at the Jasper Mobile Home Park in northeast Bear County. That's near Walsham and Gibbs Sprawl Road. Sarah Costa is live at the scene. Sarah, do we know what caused the fire yet? Not at this point. Now, Bear County Fire Marshals were out here this morning investigating. When we talked to the Bear County Fire Department, they told us that squatters were known to be at the abandoned house where they believe that fire started. At this point, when they arrived, they said squatters or there was not anyone at that abandoned house when they arrived this morning. But just take a look at the video from earlier this morning where the flames were really roaring. Bear County Fire Department says they got the call from the family living in one of the homes saying they heard popping outside their home and they got out of their house safely. When fire crews arrived, both mobile homes were on fire. County firefighters say they believe the fire started in the abandoned home and because of the wind spread to the family's home. The wind was horrendous. We had uh, embers blowing about three, 400 feet away from the home, um, actually all the way up to Walls and Road. So that's with that, um, it did threaten another trader. Um, we got them evacuated upon our arrival and we stopped before spreading to that trailer. Now, when crews arrived, 
Now, several entities were responding to this fire from the family, um, responding to this fire. Everyone from that family of four, including two children, are out safe without injuries. Now, the Red Cross was out here helping the family earlier this morning and the Bear County Fire Department telling us that a dog, the family's dog, did pass away in this fire. Live from the northeast side of Bear County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. The CDC is now saying the coronavirus, quote, might be bad. Experts say there's a chance, a strong chance of a serious outbreak in the United States, and Americans should prepare for significant disruptions in their lives. Meanwhile, we learned overnight that a member of U.S. military in South Korea has tested positive for coronavirus. Comes after another day of heavy losses on the stock market because of growing uncertainty about the toll of the virus and what it could take. ABC's Mona Kosora Abdi has the latest. This morning, the first U.S. military service member has been added to the list of Americans infected with the new coronavirus. The soldier is stationed in South Korea and was under self-quarantine when he tested positive. And now the CDC says it's not a question of if the virus will spread in the U.S., but a matter of when. We are um, asking the American public to work with us to prepare in the expectation that this could be bad. Health officials say communities should get ready to take drastic measures to control the outbreak, including closing schools and stores, adding that people should make sure they keep essentials like medications on hand in case pharmacies are forced to close. A new study finds the death rate from the coronavirus is 2.3 percent. That's compared to only 0.1 percent for the flu. But that same research finds most coronavirus patients, 82 percent, showed only mild cold-like symptoms. And while the president is trying to calm concerns, insisting the U.S. is well prepared, lawmakers on Capitol Hill are not so convinced. During a hearing Tuesday, senators from both parties questioned whether the White House's request for $2.5 billion in emergency funding is enough to prepare for an outbreak. This is not the time to try to shortchange the American people. I am very concerned that we are not prepared for uh, this or for anything like it in the future. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. U.S. Attorney General William Barr wants Congress to make sure parts of the nation's surveillance law does not expire. Barr met with GOP senators on Capitol Hill Tuesday and urged them to extend provisions in the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act that will no longer be valid after March 15th. The FISA provisions expand the FBI's ability to wiretap certain targets and request key documents. In your morning consumer stories, an opioid company reaches a $1.6 billion settlement agreement. The company, Mollenkrot, says this deal resolves drug-related claims against its subsidiaries. With the agreement, the agreement rather, is with attorneys general for 47 states in U.S. territories. The payments for plaintiffs will be received over an eight-year period. Funds will be used to help take care of addiction costs and additional needs. Toy company Mattel facing new questions about its accounting. The Securities and Exchange Commission and federal prosecutors are now taking a look at Mattel's internal probe in the way it was handling its own books. In October, the CFO left after internal financial problems surfaced. And the Better Business Bureau warning of a scam targeting those who want to contribute to political campaigns. The BBB says it works like this. You get a robocall, supposedly from a campaign, asking you for money. And then if you say yes, the call transfers you to a live person who takes your credit card information, which can be used to steal your ID. The BBB suggests screening your calls and staying away from unsolicited robocalls. They're finally home and they're back in action tonight. It is game day, San Antonio. For the first time in nearly a month, the Silver and Black will play in front of their home crowd. Team practice at the AT&T Center ahead of tonight's game against the Dallas Mavericks. But LaMarcus Aldridge will be missing from the court tonight after the team said he's nursing a sore shoulder. Spurs have 26 games left, 15 of which are at home to make that final attempt at a playoff push to extend the team's 22-year streak of making the postseason. Tip for tonight's game against the Mavs, 730. We'll have highlights and reaction tomorrow morning right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Need that win tonight. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, 640, 41 degrees. Having healthy and happy relationships with same gender peers could impact your middle school students' love life years down the road. After the break, we're going to take a look at how best friends could impact romantic relationships.
What's not to love about being in love? Positive romantic relationships in adulthood have been linked to lower levels of depression and anxiety as well as better physical health. Many of us are always searching for the secret to a happy adult partnership, right? Well, Stephanie Cerna shows us your middle school bestie might have something to do with it. Hmm. Think back to your early teen years. Who is your very best friend? Uh, it was actually two. They, we were kind of, uh, they call us the three musketeers. It was Daniel Cheney and Nick Nelson. Debbie. Debbie. I'm Debbie one, because I'm a couple of months older. Oh, okay. She's Debbie two. She was born in March, I was born in October. Now think back to the qualities that made or still make you close. I feel like we can confide in each other. Experts with the University of Virginia studied factors from adolescents that could predict a satisfying adult romantic life. It may be that the real important work that's being done is occurring in these friendships and that's what's going to translate ultimately to how satisfied people are later on. Researchers used data from 165 men and women ages 27 to 30. They examined their early peer same-sex friendships and they asked participants whether as teens they felt close to their friends and comfortable speaking their minds. It was really this friendship domain that seemed to be most predictive of how folks were feeling about their romantic life later on. Experts say you should encourage your kids to nurture friendships, help them be assertive, and also teach them to resolve conflict. All things that will help them later on in life. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. 645. Time to check the roadways. How's it looking, Marcus? Well, we still have that major accident that Katrina is out on, that uh, fatal accident, but that's the only accident that we have at this time. So the uh, Nacogdoches is shut down right there just south of Wurzbach Parkway on either side of Hill Point until officers can clear that accident. Now let's take a look at Transguide. Uh, starting to get a little bit heavier traffic on the southbound main lanes of 35 up there at Evans. Northbound looks a lot better. And as we move around 35, uh, the Brooklyn exit here in the downtown vicinity, the upper and lower levels for northbound and southbound 35. So far, no problems there all the way around to 35 at Cesar Chavez. And then looking up in the far northwest side, I-10-604, that interchange very busy right now. However, the good news is the roads are dry. So as you head out, just just in case, make sure keep both hands on the wheel, put away those distractions just in case you get one of those wind gusts. Thank you, Marcus. So the wind gusts, you said this to be around pretty much all day, just not quite as strong. No, not quite, uh, but I mean, still a noticeable breeze. Mm -hmm. And then with temperatures only in the 50s, Adam, that's going to get you. Yes. Yes. We'll notice it when you step outside this morning. Hey, we've been seeing a few blue bonnet pictures, and here's a nice little uh, view of some of the wildflowers out there in Poteet. Oh, it's a great picture. Thank you very much for that. Don't forget when those blue bonnets start coming up, send those pictures in, please. Here's a live look with a uh, live cam. And yeah, we still have a few clouds hanging around. That one shot that uh, Marcus showed over there uh, looking off to the northwest side, 10 1604. It was a pretty good cloud cover. So we've still got some of these clouds hanging in here, but they're going to be clearing out later on this morning. Freezing in Lost Maples, 39 Bulverde, 42 right now in Castroville but it's the wind and that's what makes all the difference. So just about everybody feels like it's at freezing and then some 21 is the wind chill right now in Lost Maples and the wind is still upward uh, 15, 20, 25 miles per hour. These are the sustained winds. We don't have any advisories in effect and we still have wind gusts 37 in town, 36 at New Braunfels, 28 mile per hour wind gusts in Hondo. And just a couple of hours ago, it was gusting to about 44 in Hondo and temperatures. Like I said, we're not going to get all that warm today. Mid 50s, that'll be about it. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to be down to freezing here in town. So we're looking at some 20s in the hill country. Bit warmer in the afternoon, upper 50s, close to 60. And then still going to be cold on uh, Friday morning. Uh, not freezing again here in town, but we'll still make it down into the 30s. And then we'll slowly get a little bit warmer. It's chilly on, on Saturday morning on top of that. So we do have a few clouds hanging around here right now. Upstairs in the atmosphere, we've got some very dry air, but here's these clouds that are hanging in here on the uh, satellite radar imagery. But like I said, they'll continue to push on out. So we are going to be clearing out by later on this morning. There's the big, big drop, this big trough in the jet stream right there. And that's pulling down all that really cold air on top of us. And we keep a nice northwesterly flow around for the next few days. So that'll keep temperatures coolish, but beautiful blue skies out there. And then by the weekend, we will start to temperatures will modify a little bit and then we start to get 
a little bit more moisture coming in upstairs in the atmosphere. So uh, a couple more clouds on Saturday, a lot more clouds on Sunday and Monday, and maybe even a shower or two to start off next week. 50 today at noon, sunny skies. Yeah, still breezy throughout the morning hours and then not as windy, but uh, you'll notice it, especially in the shadows today. Plenty of sunshine, though, 54 for a high temperature, about 15 degrees below normal. Freezing tomorrow morning, then up to 60 for a high temperature. Again, lots and lots of sunshine. We will finish up the week on Friday with lots of sunshine, as well as starting off the weekend up to 70 on Saturday and then 75 Sunday. More clouds around here. A couple of showers are possible by the first of next week. All right, thanks, Mike. Right now, it's about 10 till 41 degrees. Taking a look outside with live camera as we head to break. So happy to have you with us on this Wednesday. Take a look at your television if you can. Beautiful sunrise. Welcome back, everyone. We have a couple of accidents. Northbound 35, uh, just as you're passing Laredo, getting closer to the Cesar Chavez exit, and then this major accident where uh, we still have Katrina live out there at the scene, Nacogdoches at Hill Point. What's the latest, Katrina? Well, good morning. Traffic investigators just arrived here a few moments ago. They've been taking some pictures of the scene. Uh, it is a woman possibly in her 60s, according to police, who was hit and killed here this morning. Again, this is Nacogdoches Road, just south of Wurzbach Parkway, where this happened. Police tell me that she had just left a Mexican restaurant in the area. She crossed here. As you can see, there is no crosswalk. And that is when uh, the pickup that you see there on your screen hit her. The driver did stay, is cooperating with police. There are several witnesses also who have been talking to officers. Uh, so it seems, according to police, as, this is, if, as if this is just a horrible accident. A woman, again, possibly in her 60s, who was hit and killed here this morning, uh, right around 6 o'clock this morning. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Two mobile homes destroyed in an early morning fire in northeast Bear County. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Bear County firefighters saying strong winds making this fire extremely challenging to put out this morning. But just take a look at that video from earlier where you can really see those flames roaring. Bear County Fire Department says they got the call just after 2 o'clock this morning from the family living in one of the homes saying they heard popping outside of their mobile home. They got out of their house safely and no one was injured. When crews arrived, both mobile homes were on fire. County firefighters say they believe the fire started in an abandoned home next door to the home where the family was living. And they say the cause of the fire spreading was definitely the strong wind. This was a two alarm fire with multiple entities responding. Everyone from that family of four that included two children are out safe without injuries. The Red Cross was here helping them. A family dog did die from that fire. As for what caused this fire, that is unknown at this time. The Bear County Fire Department did tell us that squatters are known to frequent the abandoned home. However, when they arrived, no one was in that home at that time. Arson investigators are out here investigating. From Northeast Bear County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Well, as you can hear in uh, Sarah's microphone, it is windy out there. We do have a few clouds hanging around here this morning. It is 40 now here in town, close to freezing in the hill country, but the wind, boy, knock off about 10 degrees, and that's what it actually feels like out there, right around freezing and then some. Wind is still out of the north at uh, 15, 20 miles per hour, 38 mile per hour wind gusts in uh, New Braunfels. Just had got the uh, report from earlier this morning. It actually was gusting close to 45 miles per hour at the airport right around 4 o'clock this morning. 50 at noon, 54 for a high temperature. It won't be as windy, but still enough of a breeze out there. And then freezing tomorrow morning. All right, thanks, and thank you for being with us, everybody. Go Spurs, go. Welcome back, guys. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. Don't want to miss it.